The Illusion of Matter How Consciousness Shaped the Cosmos Adapted from the Consciousness in the Nature of Reality book by Dr. Farid Mostaman What if everything you've ever called reality was just a reflection, not of the world, but of the mind observing it? From the temples of ancient wisdom to the equations of modern physics, one truth emerges again and again and again. Consciousness is not born from the universe. The universe is born from consciousness. This is the story of how the cosmos came alive the moment you began to see it. And once you see it differently, you'll never unsee it again. Before equations and electrons, before telescopes and test tubes, there was only the mind, asking, wondering, reaching toward the stars. Our first tool of exploration was not the microscope, but consciousness itself. In this video, we delve into the intricate history of human thought and examine how the relationship between the mind and matter has shaped our worldviews for thousands of years. We begin in ancient Greece where Plato taught that the material world was a shadow, a reflection of higher, eternal forms. Reality, he said, was not found in the changing world of senses, but in the unchanging realm of ideas. His famous allegory of the cave painted humanity as prisoners, mistaking shadows for truth. Only by turning inward, toward the light of reason and reflection, could one glimpse reality as it truly is. Half a world away, the sages of India had already composed the Upanishads, declaring that the ultimate reality, Brahman, was pure consciousness. The physical world was seen not as fundamental but as illusion, Maya, a projection on the screen of awareness. The self, or Atman, was not a separate soul but identical to the cosmic consciousness itself. Tat Tavam Asi, the text proclaimed, you are that. These ancient traditions shared a radical premise, that the material world is not the source of consciousness, but its expression. That the essence of reality is mind, or spirit, or awareness, and the forms we perceive are simply its shifting garments. However, a new kind of thinking emerged. In the 17th century, René Descartes divided the world into two categories, mind and matter, or, you know, res cogitans and res extensa. This dualism shaped the scientific revolution and honestly, gave birth to modern philosophy. Descartes believed in the certainty of mind, cogito, ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But everything else including the body and the world became subject to doubt. This division opened the door to materialism. If matter and mind are separate, and matter appears to behave according to fixed laws, then, well, perhaps the universe is a vast machine, running without need for soul or spirit. Isaac Newton's laws describe the motions of planets and projectiles with uncanny precision, reinforcing the image of a mechanical cosmos. As the Enlightenment surged forward, so did the belief that the mind was merely a phenomenon of the brain, an accidental byproduct of chemical reactions in gray matter. Materialism became the ruling philosophy of science. The universe was cold, indifferent, and devoid of consciousness. And consciousness? Just a flicker in the darkness. Yet even at the height of this worldview, cracks began to show. Immanuel Kant argued that we never experience the world as it is, only as it appears to us. Space and time, he said, are not features of the external world, but structures imposed by the mind. In other words, consciousness was not a passive receiver, it was an active participant in shaping experience. Later, figures like Hegel and Schopenhauer challenged the materialist current even more directly. Schopenhauer proposed that the will, the inner force of striving and desire, was the root of all reality, and that the world we see is simply its representation. The inner world, not the outer one, was the key to understanding existence. In the 20th century, the rise of quantum mechanics further unsettled the materialist paradigm. The observer effect, the probabilistic nature of particles and the wave functions collapse, all pointed to the centrality of mind in the unfolding of matter. Einstein resisted this implication, insisting God does not play dice. But Niels Bohr replied, stop telling God what to do. Consciousness, it seemed, could no longer be dismissed as a mere epiphenomenon. It was reappearing, not only in philosophy, but also in physics, neuroscience and spiritual inquiry. 
the tidy categories of subject and object, mind and matter, began to blur. Today we find ourselves at a crossroads. The legacy of materialism remains strong, especially in the hard sciences, yet voices across disciplines are reasserting what the ancients knew, that consciousness may not emerge from matter, it may be the matrix from which all matter arises. Idealism, once dismissed as mystical speculation is being reconsidered. Panpsychism, the view that consciousness pervades all things, is finding new advocates. And theories like cosmopsychism propose that the universe itself is a conscious entity of which we are expressions. In this chapter, we have not only walked through the history of ideas, we have witnessed the pendulum swing between two poles, materialism and idealism, dualism and monism, the seen and the unseen. At each stage, human beings have sought to understand their place in the cosmos and consciousness has remained the most elusive and essential element. What if the final realization is not a synthesis of mind and matter, but the recognition that they were never separate to begin with? As we move forward in this journey, we will explore how modern science, despite its materialist roots, has begun to echo the voices of mystics and philosophers. The conscious universe is no longer just a metaphor, it may be the next significant paradigm shift. And to understand it fully we must remember where we came from. We must remember that behind every telescope, theory and question is a mind, alive and aware, longing to return to the source from which it sprang. This video is adapted from Consciousness and the Nature of Reality by Dr. Fareed Mostaman, a book that blends ancient wisdom, Rumi's poetry, and the frontiers of quantum physics to help you rediscover who you truly are. Subscribe, share, and explore the whole book to awaken to the deeper reality behind all things. Because the universe isn't out there, it begins within you.